Every now and then, those special people come into your life that, for no reason at all, just tend to make your life a little easier. And Cherie is uh, one of those people. So when her beloved family dog, Bosco, had passed, I thought it only fitting to do a little portrait of him. So starting off with a quick sketch of him straight onto the stretch canvas with a charcoal pencil. And as you can see here, I'm going to really cake on the paint with a plastic spatula. And realising that didn't work too well, so I'm back to my trusty filbert, which is just a round brush, but it's got, um, sorry, a flat brush, but it's got rounded edges. And here in the blocking in process, I'm using some Mars Black, and it's a brilliant colour for animals, especially those darker animals, horses, um, especially dogs, cats. Mars Black just seems to be a little bit off black but towards uh, the more warmer side so it's kind of like a very very dark raw umber. Now here's something I just wanted to point out here I've gone over the line so what I've done is I've cleaned all the paint off my brush and just come back with a nice wet brush and push that paint back in towards the ear just to uh, sculpt out that that line a little better. And it's early morning here in Australia, so of course I've got to have the mandatory loud little magpie warbling away at my window, which I usually love. But at the moment, what I'm trying to do my audio, it's, uh, yeah, definitely um, one of those things you just have to put up with. And while we're still here in the blocking in process, I just wanted to point out, you still want to get all those markings as well, because it will make it easier when you're uh, starting to do your finer detail later on. Now I know I mentioned earlier about the filbert brush, but as you can see there, it's really, really easy to be able to do your circles and curves and all sorts of things like that without having a sharp edge or starting to really bend the uh, brush out of shape. And it's just really, really easy. As you can see there, I'm just tracing it around the eye, which allows me so much more freedom of movement, being able to just block in these areas, tracing around other areas. For me, it's just my go-to brush. Now at this stage of the painting, I've got the blo blocking in process uh, completed and I'm going to start to add more tonal values. Here I've got a carbon black and it's just going straight over that Mars black and it gives me an opportunity to really bring out that depth of uh, Bosco's fur. Now I'm just going to move into a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to start to just run that over with a round brush or a detailed brush. Uh, as you can see there, I've got a fair bit of water on the brush with the paint be able to give me that, again, freedom of movement to be able to really get those little um, fine hairlines, let's say, all throughout Bosco's ear. Now, I couldn't believe this, but the fleshy colour that I'm painting on the inside of Bosco's ear now ended up being almost identical to the background colour. So it looked like you could see straight through his ears. So a bit of a pain, but I had to switch that out later on. Now we're moving into Bosco's eyes and luckily enough I had a younger eye reference of Bosco. Being a surprise, I didn't want Cherie to know that I was actually painting Bosco for her and, uh, and I just thought it might be a really nice surprise for her to deal with her grief over losing Bosco. So what I had to do here is that the uh, reference I was using, the eyes on Bosco were really old and, and to say it sounds horrible they were rather manky and I couldn't really get any uh, fine detail so luckily enough she'd uh, put a few photos of Bosco as a younger dog uh, on one of her social media sites so I was lucky enough to be able to uh, get that image and be able to transform those younger eyes onto this older painting of Bosco. And here I'm using titanium white for the reflection, Mars black and carbon black for the pupils, and for the outer edges I'm using a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. Now I'm going to move into the finer details of painting Bosco Snout. We've got the blocking in process still taking place. Even though we've done the Mars black underneath, I've also got some raw umber mixed in there, some titanium white. And I'm going to use some carbon black for the inside of his nostrils. And as you can see here, I'm changing in between brushes of going from a filbert, I'm going from a filbert, I should say, to a uh, detailed brush, which is just a round brush. And I'm just feathering out as I'm building up these layers of paint, I'm just feathering out in between, in between the two shades where I'm allowing myself, while it's still wet, to blend. Now I'm back to my detailed brush, and as you can see, I've got a lot of little dots there, all um, little dots that I've just poked all around the end of his snout, and now I'm just coming in with a Mars black, and uh, sorry, a carbon black, and I'm just really painting in around those little white um, dots that I painted just to be able to give it that real dimpled look so that it gives you that finer detail. Now if you can spend a bit of time on this it will really bring out that snout and give it that 3D or the painting I should say that 3D effect. 
and again switching out to my trusty old filbert to be able to blend those two colors together now i'm going to speed up the process here so that the video doesn't go for 10 hours but i did want to include it because it does give that uh, a good example of just how much work is um, needed to be able to get that realism or lifelike look now here i've got a mixture of colors we've got carbon black mars black titanium white and also some raw umber now i've condensed down about five to ten minutes of work here and uh, i'm finally getting to that stage of the a layering process that really starts to pay dividends because it really gives you that realistic look by adding the titanium white to uh, those highlights which really make all that work really pop out from the canvas and just on that while i'm editing i'm also seeing the sheen of the paint underneath which is showing that i'm painting wet into wet which makes it really easy to blend even though it is a acrylics it will dry fast if you can get it quick enough it will be able to be quite blendable and there are also additives you can put with your acrylic paint to let that um, drying process be a little delayed now remember I was talking earlier about having to paint in a different background because of the color of the inside of Bosco's ear there was exactly the same color as the um, background I'd chosen. Now I said it was going to be a pain and the reason being is that once I've blocked in that beautiful sky blue I have to now go through right around the outer edges of Bosco and repaint all that fur so it looks like he's actually part of that background and I'm not sure if it picks up that well but you can see from the bottom of the painting it is a lighter blue as opposed to past his ears where it goes into a darker blue and the reason why I've done that is to make it look like he's uh, looking up or we're looking at him up into the sky and I've achieved this gradient by mixing a little bit of cerulean blue to a lot of titanium white. And as I paint higher into the canvas, I just add a little bit more cerulean blue to the mix. And now speaking of cerulean blue, it's also the blue that I'm using for Bosco's collar. As you've seen there, I've painted a couple of rings uh, with my fine detail brush with um, some titanium white and finishing off his tag with the cerulean blue. Here I've already painted in his white fairy highlights, but I'm just blending that carbon black, or it might even be Mars black, into that fur to make it look like it's really integrated and part of his fur. Now I'm gonna move into the white fur around Bosco's snout. And using my detailed brush, I'm going to really uh, integrate the blocking in process to that finished off furry look. I'm using a mixture of titanium white and also antique white, which is a Matisse color. But if you need to get that sort of off white that I'm talking about, which kind of like looks like an antique kind of white, I, if I don't have the Matisse color, then I'll use a little bit of yellow ochre, and I mean a tiny bit of yellow ochre, and I'll mix that into some titanium white, also some tinting white. Now, acrylic paints do tend to uh, you lose that vibrancy once they've dried. Once you hit it with the lacquer again, it'll bring that color back out. But while you're painting, you'll feel you're just not getting enough paint on that canvas. So it really does take a lot of layering. And here is no exception. So I've, underneath, I've got the antique white. And then over the top, I'm just painting strand after strand of titanium white, which is a lot more vibrant over the antique white to really make that furry look pop out from Bosco's snout. Now I'm not sure if you can see there, but at the bottom of my easel where I've got uh, my tablet resting, there is a little shelf that I can firmly plant my forearm onto, and that gives me control over my wrist and fingers as I'm painting on uh, Bosco's snout here. And as you can see here, I haven't sped the uh, film up deliberately because I just wanted to show in real time just how much um, layering is needed to be able to give that lifelike look that I was talking about earlier. And as you can see here, I'm now going to integrate all that fur into the blue background as well. I'm painting, so I've blocked in the blue to the side of uh, Bosco as we've changed the background. And now it's a matter of just going over all that area with um, the Mars black or some carbon black, whatever the color is needed or shade I should say, needed to be able to integrate 
uh, Bosco back into that new background. And as you can see there, that time taken on Bosco Snout has really paid dividends because as you can see, it's really starting to pop out from the canvas. So I'm just gonna sign my name on this and then we'll uh, take the video over to where we're handing okay, Bosco ready? over to my beautiful neighbor, Shereen. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Pleasure.